One of my tutorials that a lot of people have found helpful is how to remove a green screen in Adobe Premiere Pro. So in this video, I'm going to show you some more background removal tricks, maybe when you don't have a green screen like this video here. So we're starting out with a video clip where we don't have a green screen background. And I'm probably going to do many examples of these because each clip is going to be different. So in this case, we have a few things to note. Uh, we have a basically kind of solid, even colored, bright background. So brightness or darkness matters. We have a pretty decent line of contrast here. So a skin tone might matter as well, depending on the contrast between that and the background. And also he's wearing a white t-shirt, which may give us some problems because it's the same color sort of as these white clouds. But I'm going to show you for this example, a two layered approach that you can use to still get a pretty decent cutout when it's just not a, a green screen. So in the effects panel, we're going to be using the keying effects and we're going to use a combination of the luma key and the ultra key here. I've just got the original clip. This is the original clip on track one. I'm going to hide that just so we can have it for reference. Now I'm going to take uh, the clip, put it on another track just so we can work with it. And the first thing we can try is a luma key. So luma refers to the luminance or the brightness or darkness basically. So in the luma key effect controls, you have two things, threshold and cutoff. So you could adjust the threshold at which the video will become transparent. And you, it looks like it's just, it's just becoming black, but that's actually just transparency. If you actually want to see that displayed as transparency, you can click the settings icon and under transparency grid, you can check that and you can actually get, see like the, the one that you see in Photoshop, if that helps you. But as I adjust this amount, especially from zero to 50 to hundred percent, we see it, it sort of cuts out him. But if we go too far, it starts to cut out some of the clouds as well. So you want to find a, a balance between the threshold and the cutoff where you're just getting a decent selection of your person. And you can see kind of how it inverts itself when the cutoff becomes higher than the threshold or vice versa. But not to complicate matters, you can just kind of balance these two sliders. And the goal is to try to get as much of the subject and as little of the background with as clear of a line as possible. So this is what that might look like for me. But you notice that this is still not perfect. Uh, if I put it on black again, we're still getting, you know, parts of since his shirt is so bright, it, it's kind of registering as the background, even this highlights on his cheek. And that's why I'm offering a two layered approach here to kind of help you out further. So, you know, depending on your clip, if you just want something really rough, this could be workable, but it's not going to look great because you're cutting into important parts of the subject, like the face. So if I were to just duplicate this clip, I'll just do that by holding option and click and dragging it on a layer above itself. Uh, you can also just drag it back over. I'll delete the luma key on this effect. So we're bringing back the full original clip and I will now use an ultra key as well. So just to show you what's going on, I'm going to hide everything else except this layer. And the ultra key allows you to pick a key color instead of working with brightness and remove that. So I'm going to ink drop over to sort of this really light blue color. Maybe I can try a few different ones and see which one seems to get about the best amount. And then I'm also going to open up the matte generation tools. And here you can adjust things about the tolerance of this selection. So right now at 50, we can increase it. So it even goes in more of those blue ranges. If you want, you can open the matte cleanup and soften things up a little bit. This can have a tendency to get a little bit pixelated looking. But for the most part, we have removed a lot of stuff around here. And in this case, we're still keeping the parts of the face. And for this method, since we might get a lot of extra stuff in the corners and the side, if you're able to, if you're working with something that's not moving across the frame a crazy amount, you can even add a mask on the opacity of the layer. So if I just create, I'll just use the pen tool for this case. It'll be easier for a person shape. But if I sort of just create a mask on the opacity of the rough outline of this person, you'll notice once you get to the end, it's kind of hard to make a point. A uh, workaround is to zoom out a little bit on the program window, and then you can 
go beyond those boundaries and make those points. And then you can put it back to fit if you want. So now I, I've really contained in my mask even a little bit more. I can add points if I want to bring it in even a little bit more. And if you really wanted to get advanced with it and go tedious, you could add a keyframe animation onto this mask path. So I could begin this mask. And if you lose the blue outlines, just make sure you highlight mask one again. I can begin this kind of opened up enough. And if I notice that, you know, I need more room here for the skateboard flip. I can bring out that mask a little bit. And then as he puts the skateboard down, I can bring it back in. So if you want to take this extra step, you can sort of animate this mask so it, it tracks your subject a little bit more. So again, every clip is going to be case by case. And these are the different sort of things that might be included in a clip. And these are tools that you can use to find solutions to those problems. So since we can only key out one color at a time, the cool thing with these keys is we can stack them. So first I keyed out the blue. Now let me try to key out this really grayish blue white. And this is another issue where I need to be careful because his shirt and his outfit is white as well. And you're going to find oftentimes perhaps the color of clothing matches the greenery or background of your clip. And, and these are things to keep in mind. So for this, you maybe don't want to increase the tolerance too much, but I'm still able to remove even some more of that section. And if you really want to get in there, that's where you're probably going to want to make sure that mask is really in there. So effectively we've removed out much of that stuff and we've used the mask to make sure we don't have to worry about everything else. Now, depending on your clip, you know, this might be enough. But you'll notice this way sometimes can get grainy or, or not the best. So what we've done by combining the two methods is we still get that crisp line and edge from the Luma key on the first layer that we did. But then we also fill in the remaining portions of those areas using this second layer. And I noticed there's some clouds here in the Luma key layer. So it might not hurt to also add an opacity mask on the Luma key layer so that we don't have to worry about that as well. And although this is not perfect, if I add another clip on the background, so that's the original, if I add like whatever layer underneath, it does provide a pretty decent result. And it's up to, you know, how much keyframing and how tight you make that mask to how clean your effect will be. But it's, still a little bit faster than more of a, a masking or rotoscoping style where you literally have to mask it exactly on the edge frame by frame. That's a job that's much better suited towards After Effects. And as an added bonus, if you want to know how to do that little before and after thing, it's just simply a crop effect, which is under the transform video effects folder. And I simply will add a crop animation. Let's just say on the left starts at zero and you can move forward a little bit and make it go to a hundred and that'll do like a before and after. I have a full tutorial on, on that if you want like a deeper explanation before and after transitions. But that's another example of how to remove backgrounds in Adobe Premiere. If you enjoyed this video, you can check out the others on my channel and subscribe to stay tuned for more. I'll probably do other examples to show you guys how I would approach those and the unique problems and solutions that other clips would provide. My name is Justin Odisho. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.